Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox video and today we're going to be checking out another one of your guys' solar systems with today's system being from Kerbal in Discord so massive thank you to them for sending in their simulation but without further ado let's get straight into this so their system today is called the Epsilon Erdani equals Ran system so without further ado yes let's check it out so there it is okay right let's see what they have prepared for us right hello Update 34 recommended. Are we in update 34? Let's have a look. Yes, we are. Oh, yeah, because 35's not even out. Oh, yeah, 35's not even out yet. Still waiting on that, actually. Can't wait for that. Right. Because it's the version I made on it and I can't play newer versions, it crashes on launch. Ooh. Oh, dear. Well, luckily, update 35 isn't released yet, so we've got, not got the problem there. Right. This is my custom version of the Epsilon Erdani system. A part of a larger solar neighborhood simulation where I added plenty of my own fictional stuff. Okay. Interesting. Is anything in the nearby zone? Okay, interesting. Right. Alrighty. Both here and in real life, Epsilon and Erdani has a proper name. Ran, the name of the Norse goddess of the sea. I didn't know that. Oh, interesting. Generally didn't know that. Ooh, okay. The theme of Norse water-related things is roughly followed throughout the system. Okay. Ran's properties are the same in real life, known to be smaller and colder than our sun, to the point of being a K-type star. Interestingly, it's more massive than neighbouring G-type Toyseti, but also smaller and colder. With luminosity under a third of the sun's spectral classes um, collate with temperature, and Ran's temperature of uh, 5049 Kelvin is fitting for a K2V type star. It is also the closest solitarily K-type star to Earth. There you go. It is a young star with estimates averaging at 600 million years. So that's a lot less than our sun's age. Um, so even though it has fitting conditions to life, there was no time for it to form beyond most basic organisms. Although it rotates only moderately faster than the sun, it is more magnetically active and has stronger stellar wind. Ran is a BY Draconis type variable star with medium brightness fluctuations caused by cosmospheric activity like star spots. Very nice, there's a bit of the, bit of the science-y stuff for you there. Right, this system has five planets and a bunch of moons and dwarf objects. Kind of small, but makes it easy to fit descriptions. The system also has three debris disks from real life too. Okay, nice. Right, so AE Gear is the only real life planet here and the rest are fictional. I base on the other gas charts on a random chart of hypothetical planets, so I don't know how accurate that is. Okie dokie. Right, so first up, we've got Skady here. And there it is. A fictional rocky sub-Earth with over a third of Earth's mass and 70% the size. The surface of Skadi is grey and cratered, with minor signs of geological activity, despite being the closest planet. Its temperature is just above the comfortable range. The rotation is a bit slow, but far from being tidally locked. There you go. Looking good. Okie dokie. Right, moving on. We got uh, Nijord. A fictional super of uh, cover system. Um, a fictional super of covering a lot of water and thick atmosphere. It is twice um, more massive than Earth and on a quarter larger, although it is further than uh, Skadi and closer to the outer edge of the Hatable zone. It's the hottest planet in the system due to its thick atmosphere and moderate albedo. Even though it has 127 times Earth's water, it's kind of fit for life and already has formed some microorganisms. Nice. It has a moon as well. This one has a lot of... I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Notum? the accents on the O and the U there, so I'm not sure how to pronounce those. Um, relatively small moon with a brownish surface that has many craters and is interesting in general. The main artificial wormholes, portals, connecting the system to others are located here. And they're very interesting. Okay. Now we're heading next. Got this one. This one. Uh, Lifting finger. Also notable. There's no description for it though. Mysterious. It's one of the larger objects in this first uh, debris belt. By the looks of it. Okay, so we've got. Oh no, hang on. Am I am I gone blind? Oh no, no, that one didn't have a. Okay. Okay, so yeah, anyway, this one, Nadoran, the dwarf planet of the inner asteroid belt, a rather small rocky body with its surface possibly suggesting lack of hydrostatic equilibrium. There it is. So next up, we got the first of the gas giants. So, Aegir? Aegir? Aegir. Right. The only real planet of the system, discovered by the Doppler um, spectroscopy and 
orbital data refined by radical velocity measurements. It is the largest planet here, a gas shine of uh, two thirds of Jupiter's mass and a slightly larger in size, although an ammonia cloud dominated planet of the uh, Sodersky class. Like Jupiter and Saturn, its temperature is closer to that of Uranus than of the Jovian planet, to which it's also similar in being the innermost gas near the asteroid belt, although it's more saturated than usual, which could mean the presence of other cloud materials like sulfur or organics. Nice, okay. Got some moons as well. Quite big descriptions here, very nice. The most massive moon in the system, slightly more massive than Ganymede, but much denser, is an icy moon with a subsurface ocean, which is another potential spot for life. The surface of a... Uh, by, by Ligia? G G G oh, these names are quite... <laughs> they're quite the tough ones. I'm not really sure how to uh, say some of these. Um, it is a bright white and has both cracks and craters. Right, and over here... Himling Leiva, Le 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 um, an icy hydrocarbon moon like Titan, but less massive and smaller. It has both a subsurface ocean and methane lakes, although the game refuses to simulate the lakes. Ah, that's annoying. Um, both of these things make this world another possible place for life to form, both usual and exotic. Uh, hey, looking underneath. Let's see if we can try and sort this ocean out. Let's see if we can get it the way it should be. Where are we? Surface, yeah. Uh, where are we? Sea level. There it is. There's your lakes. Hey, so that's how he should be. Lovely. Cool. So that's how it would look. There you go. That's how I attempt, anyway. Hey. Right, and then lastly, we've got Dufa over here. Duffa. Red, a, a rather relatively icy moon, slightly smaller than our moon. It's crater and has no subsurface ocean. All major moons of um, Aegir are not tide locked and have resonance based rotational periods. Nice. So there you go. Right, moving on, we're taking a big jump to the next object over here. We've got Bear, Bearer. A medium sized icy dwarf planet, coloured in warm shades due to organic compounds. It rotates remarkably fast, which should give it an elongated shape. Nice. There you go. Next up, we've got uh, Hele. At this point, it's getting pretty dark, but still visible. You can compare how it looks in realistic lighting. Oh, yes, of course. Right, so, yeah, pretty getting dark. Right, the second gas giant. Notably less massive than Saturn, but only slightly smaller. This planet is extremely cold, causing its appearance to be mostly hazy, cloudless Neptunian, with occasional cloud or cold clouds of nitrogen or oxygen. However, there is also a similarity to Saturn in the form of a prominent ring. In it, there is a ring gap caused by resonance with moon uh, Drothen, similar to Mimas caused Cassini diversion in rings of Saturn. Nice. Moons. Okay. So a small icy moon with active geology. Like in Teledis, the resonance of the moon heats up all of them, creating a subsurface ocean here, making it another good spot for life. Surface is cracked but somewhat less bright than that of Enceladus. Alrighty. It is a lot darker out here though from the parent star. We'll also switch to where are we? Let's go do directional light. Uh, okay, we're going the other way now. Okay, so anyway, let's close that. Star's behind us, but the light's that way. I wish the directional light always pointed it at the star. That would be that would be that'd be more useful. There it is. So this is the yeah, this is heaven. A large ice moon comparable to Pluto's size. It is also had a tidally enhanced active geology, created many cracks between occasional craters. Life friendly subsurface ocean should be uh, present too. The game doesn't simulate it here and on previous moon. The surface is of medium brightness and orangish in colour from organic and similar gunk. So there it is. You can see like little cracks across it if you look carefully there. Yep, yeah, very nice. Done some interesting work with the textures there. Nicely done. Next up, we've got this one over here, Uunor, the largest um, in-size moon of the system, comparable to our Titan, but marginally less dense, uh, of less massive and less dense. A lot of its mass is icy, and a large subsurface ocean is present. Organic compounds colour the surface in bright orange patches. Looks good actually, doesn't it? There you go. Excellent. And one more moon over here, H Horon. A smooth moon with a dark surface and distant, more inclined orbit. While you could assume that it's a captured object, several features tell us it formed as a normal moon. Alrighty, there it is. It's a lot further out. Okay, next up, we are heading to. Is it Nack over here? From here on, it's completely dark, and you have to change some realistic. Yep, done that. 
Okay, so Nuck. So how far actually is this from the parent star now? So we're looking at... Okay, so we're beyond the Neptune sort of boundaries now. The Neptune's a 30 AU mark. So a star like that is not going to really have the light, is it? Because obviously this guy is not even... Yes, it's under 33% of the sun right now. So, yeah. No, the light is not reaching that far. You can't even see the zone hardly from this distance. It's that far. All right, so there you go. Right, next up we have this one. I've lost my place. A knack. Where, where's... Uh, okay. A center-like object with a surface colored in deep orange-brown by organic compounds. It seems to be in or close to uh, one to two orbital resonance with a uh, he hello. Okay. Nice. Where's, uh, where's that one? Oh, yes. There it is. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, next up, we've got uh, Gymir. So the last... Last of the proper planets. The outermost full planet. Another frigid, cloudless blue gas giant. This time with rare clouds of neon. It's much less massive than Saturn, but similar size. Um, so the similar size rolls in low density. The outermost debris field is in a 2 3 resonance with it, including a Sinir. I submitted it for an object composition once, but my attempts at making it darker made its clouds more dull. Oh, okay. So this is an old school. This is a proper old school. Let me know what object composition it was from. I, I've done so I can't remember off the top of my head but um, obviously it would have been one of the ones with um, more gas giant focus I'm guessing but yeah nice okay nice seeing old uh, old uh, face return nice yeah I'd be interested to know which um, competition that is be, be cool get a bit, a bit of history for us uh, next up we've got Col Colga uh, small low density icy moon with colour dark from radiation and various gunk it looks pretty cratered oh yeah nice Right, and then lastly, this one here, Blogada. That's my attempt at saying that. Uh, there it is there, if you can say it. A medium-sized moon, a brilliant reddish-pink colour from organic compounds combined with geological activity. It is visibly a captured dwarf planet. Very nice. Looking good. Right, now we're moving on to Sitsinir over here, this one. Yeah, I do apologise with these pronunciations. I'll... Yeah, <laughs> these accents on them make it even more of a giant. <laughs> I have no idea, I do apologise. Uh, very small icy planet with parameters like Iris. It is the coldest body here due to the high albedo. Nice. Then is this the moon, isn't it? Yeah, Nivis. Decently sized moon for dwarf planet. It, uh, Both it and it's in here, are tidally locked to each other, very centred and still inside. Okay, so similar. We've almost got a Pluto Charon kind of Charon thing going on there. Okay. Right, moving on. We've got Fawn, Fawn Jolt over here. A medium sized dwarf planet with a dark reddish surface, similar to uh, Gong Gong in current distance. It's the most distant object in the simulation. Okay. Nice. Also notable are these two. So these are just other dwarf planets by the looks of things. Yep. And that one. That's the last one there. If I can select it. Oi! Game. What are you doing? There we go. There it is. Okay. Like with Ty Seti, I have a version of the description with exclamations of the names. You can see the extra description for this and other systems here. Okay. It's optional. You can try second in 35. Well, 35 still isn't out. So I don't want to load up the test build and stuff because that's just a very annoying <laughs> and it's still pretty buggy from what i understand so yeah we'll hold off on that but um yeah there we go so that does it for the epstein erdani ran system also known as the ran system so there you go i like it more scientific -y as well i like i like the bit of the science we had at the beginning about the star you know all this and that you know i, I like it when we have a little more uh, realism to them as well i thought it was a nicely built system I like how it's obviously the orbits are like all tilted. We're not on the flat plane here. We have got a tilt, which is always always interesting. Always has a little extra, I find, having the different angles. Um, I liked it. Yeah, I hope you guys did as well. Let us know what you think down below in the uh, comments of this system or uh, this video. So it's been a nice one. So again, a massive thank you to um, Kerbal for submitting this and then Slav Guy for doing it on his behalf because I think he has an issue with the submission um, from what I understand. So yeah, massive thank you to them. And yeah, I enjoyed it. I hope you guys did like as well. Uh, let's see if we can go for 100 likes on today's video as well, everybody. And also subscribe for more. Help us on the journey to 50,000 subscribers as we are getting closer. We've passed the 43,000 mark now, so we're, we're within 7,000. So massive, massive thank you to you all for that. Really appreciate it. It means the absolute world. Absolutely fantastic stuff. And yeah, battle's done, everybody.
make sure you all stay safe out there have a great rest of your day and i'll see you in the next video goodbye